Hey there, everyone. Um, I did say two weeks or so, um, but I have made uh, a considerable amount of changes in the in the past week and a bit. Um, so I figured I'll put a video together to show you some of these updates. Uh, kind of expand on some of the things that I, I went over in the last video and uh, and essentially call it call it a day um, and then hopefully two weeks from now I'll have another video to to share on uh, some some new items that I'll be working on all right so I'm gonna get into the latest build and all right so <clears throat> I put together a test theme uh, for my testing um, a few days ago. Uh, let's see, and it's mainly the game view that I was I was wanted to play with. Um, let's see, I can put on something with a little bit more background. There you go. All right. Um, so let me edit the view. And what I want to kind of go over is the whole copy paste um, process again. Uh, I'll do that very quickly. But one of the things that I mentioned is when you're copying and you're including conditions. So in this case, this one here, if I was to copy from the very top, it would ultimately include these two UI elements with visibility conditions, okay? And it's just simply checking to see if uh, a file exists for one of the UI elements called Arcade, all right? And it's determining whether or not it should display or, or hide uh, the game cover, all right? Anyway, um, I mentioned that when you paste, there's the potential of not all the conditions being copied correctly, and therefore it will result in an error. So before I was just showing a warning every time that you did a paste, if conditions existed. Now you'll get a warning if a condition was not correctly pasted. So I'm gonna try and uh, uh, go over that as best I can, okay? So, like I said, I copied from the very top and I'm just going to pick another game view. And hit paste in place. And by the way, I've changed the performance. Uh, I've improved the performance um, tenfold um, when pasting. And uh, as you saw, that didn't take very long at all to paste however many elements this is. It's probably over 35 under that master dock one. Okay. So performance is being greatly uh, enhanced for pasting and paste in place. Uh, so let me see if I can set up a scenario and I'll use this one because I don't, I don't want to touch the uh, the other view. Um, so let's see. We have visibility conditioning on here. All right. So it's ref oh, and by the way, the conditions are correctly copied. They've mapped themselves accordingly. And there was no warning. If you notice, when I hit paste, the warning uh, panel did not come in. But what I want to do here, I'm going to copy this and just paste it here. And let me um, yeah, reduce the, the size here. Whoops. All right, so I've just placed it here out of the way. 
Um, so I've called it image nine. Now what I'm going to do, and that was a clone of image three. So I'm going to make this reference image nine for the same conditions. File exist is yes. File exists is yes. All right, I'm going to copy. And I believe this one was also looking at image three. And I'm going to switch that over to use image nine. Visible collapsed, okay? So visible collapsed. So this is now referring to image nine, all right? I'm now going to copy this structure starting at dock one and it does not include image nine but these two ui elements here refer to image nine okay and that's gonna key so i'm gonna hit save i'm gonna pick another game view let me just get those out of the way uh, again paste in place now we have the warning, pasting items with conditions. Please visit the conditions against the pasted items as the UI element names they reference could be incorrect or may not exist. So what I've done, I now put warnings. Element has uh, a visibility condition and error. So now you can see the conditions with errors. So if I click here, it positions to the condition. It also says it has an error. If I click, Lo and behold, it was referencing um, image nine, and I didn't copy image nine along with this group of elements. So therefore, it cannot reference image nine, okay? Now, this does not cause the code to crash or anything like that. Um, in this case, the whole visibility conditioning logic would have been disabled. The code would not be created for that because of this missing condition. Uh, if I didn't do that, then the XAML code would actually crash. All right. So you've got some safeguards here. You're warned that there are errors in the conditions and it's flagged here. Plus you had the yellow warning that popped in from the right hand side of the screen. So ample warning. But I wanted to kind of clarify what that meant when you're copying uh, elements with conditions from one place to another, and sometimes they would copy and sometimes they wouldn't. I wanted to kind of provide an example um, of when that particular scenario would rear its uh, ugly head. And, and obviously I've made it a lot easier for you to kind of troubleshoot that, okay? Um, so let me get out of this view. So hopefully that, that kind of explains how all that works. Um, so let's go back to my test view and kind of explain <clears throat> what's going on in here. Um, so as you can see, primarily we have three frames, one, two, and then the third one, which is now kind of faded. Um, actually, I can switch off all the animations and it will bring everything back and they'll stay where they, where they are. Um, so we have one, two, and then three frames. The third frame being uh, very simple. It's just a text scroller um, inside uh, the frame. But what I've done here, if you notice, I have this on pretty much all the UI elements now, I have a new property called fill parent. So what you can do, you can add your UI element to a parent and then you can just simply say fill parent. And what it will do is actually take on the width and, and height of its parent, okay? So you don't have to set the width or, or anything like that. It will automatically um, 
uh, resize along with its parent because you've essentially told it to. All right, so I could change the parent width and height all day long and it will resize this one too automatically. Okay. Um, the same is true for frame two. I have a grid and the reason I have a grid is because at the bottom of the grid, um, in the background of the grid, I should say, we have image five. And image five is fan art, which you can clearly see in the background. Okay. And I've told it, I want you to be grayscale and have applied a very kind of dark blue tint over that fan art. Okay, similar to what I've done in the, the whole background of this particular view, but I've used a brown instead. All right. Um, so yeah, I have, a, I have a grid first in frame two, and that grid, um, I believe, is also set to fill parent. So it fills the, the size of the frame. And then stack two, I've set that <laughs> to be the same size as the grid. All right. So if you resize the frame, it will now resize the grid. It will resize the stack. It have a cascade effect. It will also um, resize the wallpaper or the backdrop, uh, backdrop, backdrop. I can't speak. Backdrop to uh, frame two. All right. So there's an awful lot going on and it's all good. And then within this stack, as you can see, I have uh, the, the game game name and uh, it will wrap and I've set a maximum width. So it will remain within a certain, you know, certain width here. And then obviously I have the various labels and the metadata values along with them and I have visibility conditioning so if it doesn't have a value it will just not display the label and it won't obviously display the the metadata value all right and everything will get um, shunted upward so if type of play was missing for example community and user rating would would start here likewise if maximum players didn't have a value, then all this would shuffle up. All right. So there's quite a lot going on. And then frame one, <laughs> there's an awful lot going on in this one. So again, I'm using a grid because um, grid serves as, as two purposes. If you, if you notice one, it will serve as a, uh, to start with, it will show the um, uh, box front unless it's arcade, okay? And that's why I have this other dot panel here. There's a, a switch. So if there is an arcade image, it will show that and hide game cover or collapse game cover. Otherwise, game cover is being displayed and arcade is not being displayed, all right? So I have this alternate switch thing going on. And grid is, is perfect for housing all these various um, UI elements, okay? Um, and then I have animation set up for these. So it alternates between showing, um, you know, wallpaper in this frame first, uh, that's animated, it rotates and zooms in and out while it's showing the, um, uh, arcade or game cover and the associated media and then after a few seconds um, that all fades away and the video is displayed as the whole frame is stretched and because all the frames are housed in a dock and as you can see from the icon they're arranged horizontally if I resize a, uh, a component within the dock in this case, a frame, as I expand the frame, it's going to push everything else, um, in this case, to the right of that frame, it's gonna push it out of the way, all right? And that was kind of the effect that I was going for here, 
All right. So um, if I double click on the animation settings here, you can see that um, I'm essentially just playing with the width here. So I'm setting the initial width here um, when I'm saying run, an run animation immediately. That means when the view first comes up, set the width to 710. And then uh, during selection, so as I'm scrolling up and down through the list of games, again, I'm telling it to say, whatever width you are, I want you to resize to 710. All right, and, and it's gonna take 0.5 uh, seconds to perform that move. So it's pretty quick, all right? And then once you've actually let go of the uh, uh, gamepad or the cursor keys or what have you, and you know you've settled on a on a game um then i'm telling it to so again go from whatever width you're currently at to this setting here in this case it's 1199 is the width all right and again it takes you know 0.5 uh, second to to perform that move all right so you end up with um you end up with this Okay. All right. And then if I pick another game. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm just going to quickly publish this. And then load big box. So again, you know, the, the purpose of this test theme was, um, well, first of all, I, I, I was watching Netflix. That's why I called this Netflix style. I was watching Netflix and I, I think one of the one of the rows, I think it was the top 10 or most popular or whatever. I think it was top 10. And as my cursor uh, was over one of the items, the, 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 the selected item expanded and revealing the video and I'm like I'm sure I can do that in my theme creator there's no reason why I can't do that so that's that's what I wanted to do I just wanted to make sure can I do this um, and then you know I wanted alternating imagery you know I wanted static images first and then fade away and the video displayed so I just want to make sure that you know what I had in mind I could I could actually do with the theme creator um, and, and there were, obviously there were some issues with my code and whatnot. It, I couldn't realize exactly what I wanted to do immediately. But um, and, and after restructuring some of the some of the UI elements, um, it, it came out it came out wonderful. So um, I'm 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 really happy with the changes that I made uh, last weekend. I, I think it's I think it's fantastic. I think you really really like it. Um, so, you know, now we're seeing it full screen. And it's just little things. Um, you know, obviously the video expands and that's, and that's fine. In the bottom left, um, we have the clear, game clear logos, but I've deliberately removed color um, and, and have them in a, in a almost white, uh, very light gray uh tent over the top um and then i've got the year the um esrb and what is it is it play mode or genre genre i believe and depending on the length of those values they'll resize because the, there is a certain width that i have in mind so let's see if i can find something with a much longer really unless this says racing it'll be a little bit longer I guess more so than the word action yeah I mean it's hard to tell but it's 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 resized that whole line of text so that everything fits in perfectly and again the clear logos uh, are automatically adjusted so that they all have the same look and feel all colors have been removed 
and all of it is perfectly aligned and spaced in the bottom left of the video area. And again, you can't do this kind of thing um, using uh, the current um, the current build of the theme creator. It's only possible um, using these, you know, new controls and and how you can nest those controls. So um, yeah, I'm 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 really excited about this. I mean, this this is you know the 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 possibilities are are endless as as it would be if you were doing this in in native XAML. And again, I'm just tapping through some of these and just looking at some of the clear logos here. Um, and again, the the image in the background, the rotating image. I mean, that's just a static, um, a static PNG that I found on the web. Um, it's it's not a video or anything. I'm just doing a. What I've done, I've zoomed in, um, or I've scaled it, I should say, uh, about 200%, so it fills that whole area, and then I just rotate it slowly. And as it's rotating slowly, it's scaling even further. So it, I think it scales from 200% to, I don't know, two, 210%, something like that, very slow. And just as the wallpaper um, or the background to the whole view, that too has a very slow uh, scaling uh, animation applied to it as well. And I'll, I'll leave it up just for a, a second or two. You can actually um, see it's slowly scaling back down to um, you know 100%. Now it's scaling beyond 100% again. So it's very subtle. So th there's an awful lot going on. Um, would I actually release a theme like this? No. I think there's too much going on, um, but um, but again, it's all about concepts, what you can do, how you can nest them, what can you nest, um, uh, what can you achieve, and uh, you can certainly uh, you can certainly achieve a lot. And um, for me, anyway, the the performance is is very very good. Um, but again, like I said, there's an awful lot going on. There's probably unnecessary images here. The, the UI itself doesn't really make any sense. I'm hiding the, the game information, um, you know, the, the scroll text. That would probably be something that I would want to retain on screen. Um, but again, it's just uh, proof of concept, uh, testing, testing performance, testing all the UI elements that I've got nested. Um, and I can say I'm, I'm very, very happy with the result uh, of what I was able to achieve, and very quickly, by the way. Um, so, yeah, that is basically the fruits of my labor from last weekend. And um, so with that test theme, uh, I sent it to a couple of, couple of folks. Uh, well, I probably sent it to about five or six people, but um, more importantly, I sent it to three people um, a couple of days ago um, because I wanted to make sure that the uh, theme itself and the associated DLLs would actually work on um, PCs configured for non-US. Non so sure enough, two out of the three people uh, reported that they weren't getting anything. The, the theme was not being displayed correctly. Um, so I revamped the DLL and uh, ensured correct use of um, uh, the, the culture. <laughs> so numerics are being converted correctly from one language to another and back again. And, um, and I republished the theme and sent the theme back out to those two individuals, uh, Thimalar and CMOS, and uh, they they confirmed that the theme was now working. So that's that's fantastic news. It means that it means that when I finally get to release this software, um, I know that the uh, DLL will support 
um, multi multi language. All right, uh, so there won't be any surprises there. Um, the the current build on the forum does support multi language. However, there's a big difference uh, this time around with this particular build. I'm allowing fractions. Okay, the build on the forum does not. So when you're placing objects on screen, it's it's uh, you're not using fractions at all. Okay, you know the 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 coordinates are absolute. Uh, the um, what am I trying to say? The the width and height is absolute. All right, um, but this build uh, allows fractions. So um, that is where the issue was coming in uh, a decimal point um, for us and and uh, british uh, is a decimal point however um, uh, spanish they use a comma in place of a of a decimal point and then ultimately that's recognized as a as a thousand um, uh, separator in uh, in in the US and Great Britain so it it wreaks havoc so that's why it's very important to kind of handle the whole uh, number formatting uh, between cultures and uh, I've done it correctly this time around um, within this uh, within this uh, new build of the DLL so I'm I'm very happy with that and and ultimately I'm very happy that um, there won't be any surprises uh, when I finally get to release the whole thing all right so many things that um, I can have covered fairly quickly uh, especially after the last video but again performance and, and just highlighting where errors are um, I, I figured that was um, very very important I didn't want to leave it there how I demonstrated in the last video um, I felt really bad about it I was more happy just to show off the concepts of the whole cut copy paste and delete but you know there were obviously a, a few other things i needed to kind of follow up on which um which i have now done um so anyway this is the video um i i still plan to do another video in a uh in in two weeks um i've got to focus on the other features now um uh like uh you know new wheel support obviously um but get back into adorners and finish that off so you can resize ui elements using the mouse instead of plugging in the the, the values into the the properties panel um that is top priority um so yeah give it two weeks hopefully i'll have that finished and uh, show that off okay so um, until then everyone take care and uh, I'll be talking to you very soon.